Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the songs. Um, those two of those came on. We I had worship music playing. Our house has speakers, so it's really really cool. <laughs> and so I um, had those playing yesterday, and I they just meant a lot to me. So I hope you really enjoyed those. Um, but first of all, um, I want to go have everyone go around and say who they are and just one thing about themselves. So we'll start with Holly, and then we'll just kind of go like zigzag back and forth, and we'll just go over here. Okay. <laughs> My name is Holly, and I am a three-year-old teacher at Missionary Shaker. So I was really convicted yesterday. Um, we had, I am reading New Morning Mercies. I don't do it. I hadn't opened it in a really long time, I'll be honest. And I was really behind, but I opened it yesterday. And it talked about our identity and who we are in Christ. And if we're saved, um, then we are a child of God, like that last song said. And so um, it starts out and it says, you don't work in the hope of getting an identity. You work in celebration of the identity that in Christ you have been given. So we already have our identity. There's no need to search for who we are. Um, our purpose in life has already been um, given and proclaimed. And um, it listed out this really cool, I guess it's, you could call, it's kind of like a poem, but um, I really, really liked it and highlighted several parts of it. Um, it says, no need to search for myself, no need to grasp for meaning for life, for my life or purpose, for what I do. No need to hope for inner peace, that sense of well-being for which every heart longs. No need to hope that someone or something will make me happy or give me joy. I no longer need any of these things because grace has connected me to you, and you have named me your child. So, I don't know about y'all, but one of the things that I struggle with is just what's next and what is the purpose of my life. I and high school it was always easy for me to be like well, what's next is college and God was really great in showing me exactly where I needed to go but then now that I'm almost a senior in college everyone comes up to me and well what are you going to do after college and that is the question <laughs> and I haven't decided yet and um, I, that's been something that my mind constantly goes to and I'm like oh no I'm not not where I need to be I haven't decided what I'm going next, if I'm going to go to law school, I haven't taken the LSATs, and I have to pass those, and if I'm going to go straight to the workforce, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to work, and um, whatever it may look like for you, your may next may be what are you going to do tomorrow, or the next day, or what you're going to do in school, or if you're going to go to college, if you're going to go straight to the workforce, or anything like that, 
But this line in this that really spoke out to me was, um, no need to hope that someone or something will make me happy or give me joy, and no need to grasp for meaning for my life or purpose for what I do. And so just a reminder that if our identity is truly in Christ, then there, there should be no worry about what's next to come or what our purpose in life is. Um, so it also lists Galatians 4, 4 through 7, and I'm going to, if you want to open up to there, I'm going to read that. It's a really cool passage. Um, I'll give you a second to get there. Um, so Galatians 4, 4 through 7. says, when the time came to completion, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then God has made you an heir. So I just thought that verse was extremely cool to think about how we are um, heirs of the King of Kings, the, the Lord who has was before time itself, and um, just to really think about us being children of God. And um, I googled um, verses that went along with that, and I thought it would be cool this morning if we just kind of popcorned and read a bunch of verses that proclaim that we are children of God. So of course, you are only a child of God if you're saved, and if you're not, um, we would love to talk to you about that. But um, I wanted us to read those verses aloud, and so I'll just take the first person who raises their hands, and I have several verses, and we'll just wait for them to get there, and then I just want to, we'll just read them. So the first is 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Anyone have a thought? Or I'll call on people. <laughs> Lauren, will you do 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20? And I'll go ahead, I'll go ahead and give you all the verses, and so then we can just read them one by one. So Lauren is 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Um, Jane Ellen, you'll do Galatians 3, 27 through 28. Galatians 3, 27 through 28. Maddie, I'll just do this whole row first. first of all. You'll do Jeremiah 1 through 5. Uh, Del, if you'll do um, Genesis 1, 27. And I can repeat these two. So right now we have Lauren as 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Jane Ellen as Galatians 3, 27 and 28. Uh, Maddie as Jeremiah 1, 5. Um, Del as Genesis 1, 27. Will you read, Caitlin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll do 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Caitlin. Um, Brian, will you do John 1, 12? Please. Thank you. Um, Caitlin, that was 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Um, John 1, 12 for Brian. Um, Bright, will you do 1 John 3, 1 and 2? Okay. 1, 3, 1 and 2. And then Alyssa, will you do 1 Peter 2, 9? Okay, does everyone have them? Can you repeat it? And I'll just, I'll say them, I'll say it right before you do it. So we'll start with Lauren, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. For do you not know that your body is the temple of um, the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were brought at a, for you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit with our body. And Galatians 3, 27 and 20. For those of you who are baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ. There is no Jew or Greek or slave or free, male and female, since you are all one in Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 1, 2, 5, or 1, 5. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. Genesis 1, 27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. 1 Corinthians 6, 17.
to all who believed in him and accepted him, and he gave the right to become children of God. 1 John 3, 1 and 2. One and two. So, chapter three, verses one and two. See what great love the Father has given, has given us that we should be called God's children, and we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it didn't know Him. Dear friends, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not been yet. And first Peter two nine. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called who calls you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. So I think um, God's word is specifically speaks for itself, and all of these verses point out that since Jesus bought and paid for us with his own blood, then we are his. Um, the tricky part then becomes living our life for him. And um, a verse that I found that I really liked was Colossians 3, 1 through 3. So if you want to turn there, if not, I can just read it. It's up to you. See if I can find it. Colossians 3, 1 through 3. And it says, So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Um, so because we have chosen to walk with Jesus, our life must look radically different than the rest of the world. And so that's one reason I thought it would be really cool on the first day of school if you went around the classroom and you said your name, and then instead of saying maybe an interesting fact about yourself, I play the violin, I like to read, you said um, that you were a child of God. Um, the other night, I was taking a shower. Danielle and I finally have our own sink. She's very happy because I'm not as clean as her. Um, I am clean, but I'm not as clean as Janella. So um, she's very excited that we have our own sinks, and we really like our bathroom, and it's really fun, and we like our new house. But um, when she was about to get in the shower for the very first time, she, <laughs> she turned on the she didn't get in because she turned on the water, and the drain was clogged up. And it, the water kept rising and filling, and it was really gross. And thankfully, like the next day, our um, we had family come over, and Aunt Debbie, if you know, her, she probably don't know, but um, <laughs> she is Dad's next little sister. She's like in between Dad and Aunt Lisa, who lives with us. And she's a fixer and a cleaner. She loves to come when we move, and she likes to clean everything and help us move everything. And so Janelle mentioned that her shower was messed up, so. I said her shower, <laughs> our shower. Um, and she and Uncle Tim came upstairs and fixed it. And they there were like shower cap things, like shampoo caps that had been clogged in the drain. Somehow they had gotten down in the drain. So anyway, our shower finally got fixed. And um, it, it was nice and we really liked it. But then the other night I was in the shower and I do a lot of deep <laughs> and I was in there and I was just standing and enjoying the really warm water, really relaxed. And I l kept looking down and I started to hear, you know, you kind of hear the, the shower water spray and you realize that there's water on the back because you can hear it. It sounds different than when it just sprays on the floor. And so I looked down and I was like, it feels like it's starting to rise up. The water just like feels like it keeps coming up. And I was like, oh, I bet it's fine. I bet it's just being slow or something. And then I just was still pondering thoughts. And then I looked down again, and the water was above my feet. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is really messed up. I can't believe. Like, I was like, I don't know what has gone down there that we just fixed it like two days ago. And then it dawned on me that I looked down at the drain, and the drain was close. And so... Um, Anyway, it was just a, I, I started to really think about this metaphor, and because you are a Christian, um, you have been fixed. The drain was fixed. Um, Jesus has made you his. When God looks at you, he sees his child. However, um, we aren't home, and we aren't in heaven yet, and we are constantly 
just like that shower head was keep going, we were constantly being flooded with the things of this world and our sin nature, and we're at war with the, what we want to do and what um, God wants us to do. And I was just really reminded about how we are fixed. The drain was fixed, but somehow it had gotten closed. And so I just wanted us to remember today that we have the power and Jesus has bought and paid for us and we have the power that is the, rose, that the same power that rose him from the dead. We have that power to choose to unclog the drain and to live for him and to let all of the, the worldly things just filter through and to not affect, infect us. And so um, I just really want you to be encouraged today that um, you are his child and because of that, um, you can conquer this world. And so I'm going to end. I've ended with this verse several times. It's my favorite verse. It's my life verse. Um, it's John 16, 33. And it says, let me get there. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. Be courageous. I have conquered the world. Um, and because Jesus has conquered the world, we have that same power to conquer the world and live for him and just live every day like you're a child of God. That's all I have.